The Chinese Communist Party was founded in 1921, not long after the 2000 years of Chinese imperial dynasties ended in 1911. In the last years of the Qing dynasty, the continuous humiliating defeat by the West in the Opium Wars and the First Sino-Japanese War in 1895 had convinced many to believe that an institutional change is needed in China. In 1900, the Eight Nation Alliance invaded northern China with the aim to relieving the foreign legations in Beijing. It resulted in Boxer Protocol and initiated the process of final collapse of the Qing Dynasty. At that time, there was great social and political backwardness in China, and China was still primarily an agricultural country. From December 1908, the Qing government created some apparatus to allow gentry and businessmen to participate in politics. These middle-class people were originally supporters of constitutionalism. However, their dream fell apart when Qing government created a cabinet with Prime Prince Qing as the prime minister and nine of the 13 members of the experimental cabinet were from the Manchu's imperial family. The 1911 revolution, or Xinhai Revolution, ended China's last Manchu-led Qing dynasty, and thus the 2,100 years of imperial monarchy. It led to the establishment of Republic of China. The revolution culminated a decade of agitation, revolts, and uprisings. Actually, multiple solutions have been tried and failed. Constitutional monarchy, republic, etc. Because of the widely spread political and warlords diversion, the economic backwardness, immature capitalism, and working class, the revolution failed to establish a legitimate central government. May 4th movement in 1919 is an anti-monarchism and anti-imperialist movement which greatly helped the Chinese intellectuals to accept the Marxism influence. It was initiated by the student protests in Beijing. This movement aimed to protest the Chinese government's weak response to the Treaty of Versailles decision to allow Japanese to return territories in Shandong that had been surrendered to Germany in 1914. Then the working class joined and the center moved from Beijing to Shanghai. It is the turning point in the new culture movement in China, which is against the old aristocratic and feudalism traditions. Leaders of the new culture movement believe that traditional Confucianism values were responsible for the backwardness and weakness of the nation. Chinese intellectuals called for a rejection of traditional values and adoptions of Western ideals of Mr. Science and Mr. Democracy in place of Mr. Confucius in order to strengthen the new nation. It's ridiculous to think that the Confucianism that emphasized on order, hierarchy, obedience, eclecticism, which was used by imperial rulers to brainwash the people, has now become so popular around the world. Chinese intellectuals have already realized a hundred years ago that Confucianism, together with the monarchy it served, is the root cause of the backwardness of China and the stagnation of science and technology. Yet the CCP has established Confucius institution all around the world and in the United States. History is going backward. Chen Duxiu and Li Dazhao were the first intellectuals to introduce Marxism to China. According to the official narrative account by the CCP, the party was founded on 1 July 1921 with the help from the Far Eastern Bureau of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and the Communist International. The first National Congress of the CCP was held on 23 July 1921 in a house in the Shanghai French Concession and was moved to a tourist boat on South Lake in Jiaxing, Zhejiang province on the last day for the worry of French police interruption. Only a dozen delegates, including two from Communist International, attended the Congress. From when CCP was created, it only took 28 years from a few hundred initial members in 1921 to defeat millions of nationalist army and take over the mainland in 1949. 
To understand how the CCP has won the civil war in China, you need to take a look at the following aspects. The Soviet Union and its help in China's revolution, Mao's leadership in CCP, and finally the CCP versus Chinese Nationalist Party, aka KMT, the collaborations and civil war. The success of October Revolution or Bolshevik coup from Russia facilitated the Marxism-Leninism to spread to China and deeply changed China's contemporary history. CCP can't be successful and won the civil war without the help from the Soviet Big Brother. From the beginning, the Soviet hope to foster pro-Soviet forces in the Far East to fight against anti-communist countries, especially Japan. When CCP was established in Shanghai in 1921, it started out as a branch of the Communist International and got a lot of help from the Far East Bureau and Secretariat. Two delegates from the Comintern joined the first CCP National Congress. Soviet Union didn't just put eggs into one basket. It not only helped the setup of the CCP, but also gave support to Nationalist Party. Sun Yixian was the founder of the Nationalist Party and KMT. In order to speed up the conquest of China and defeat the warlord government in the north, from 1923, Sun established the principles to work with Soviet communists and farmers in Nationalist Party. Sun and Soviet Union's Adolf Jofi signed the Sun Jofi Manifesto in January 1923. Sun received help from the Comintern for his acceptance of communist members into the, his KMT. With the Soviets' help, Sun was able to develop the military power needed for the northern expedition against the Beiyang government in Beijing. After Sun's death in 1925, the Soviet Union tried to reduce the power of Sun's successor, Chiang Kai-shi, and convert the KMT into a Bolshevik party. The attempt failed, and Sun's principle to work with the Soviet was abandoned in the Nationalist Party. During the first stage of the Civil War, Soviet Union helped the CCP to create a Chinese Soviet Republic, aka CSR. In National Soviet People's Delegates Conference held in Beijing, Jiangxi Province, November 1931. Mao was both head of the state and the chairman of the Central Executive Committee. Although most of China was still controlled by the nationalist government of the Republic of China, an opening ceremony was held for the new country, and Mao Zedong and other communists attended the military parade. Because the CSR had its own national bank, printed its own money, and collected its own taxes, this is considered the beginning of the two Chinas. CSR had a population of 3 million. Its economy was more stable than most of the areas controlled by China's warlords. In addition to the militia and guerrilla soldiers, the well-armed Chinese Red Army had reached more than 140,000 soldiers by the early 1930s. At the beginning of the second stage of Chinese Civil War, Soviet Union has helped CCP greatly to gain a advantage over its KMT. Before Soviet Union evacuated Manchuria in 1946 after the surrender of Japanese, not only did the Red Army of Soviet Union transfer all the confiscated Japanese weapons to CCP's Liberation Army, led by Lin Biao, it also left a political vacuum for CCP to fill, which tipped the balance in the Manchuria and helped the PLA's first Liaoshan campaign towards the final victory. Soviet didn't want a unified China. A divided China is better to the interest of Soviet Union. After the Chinese Civil War was close to the end, Stalin initially favored a coalition government in post-war China. He tried to persuade Mao to stop the CCP from crossing the Yangtze River and attacking the KMT positions south of the river. Mao rejected Stalin's proposition, and on 21st April 1949 began the Yangtze River crossing campaign, and on 23rd of April they captured the KMT's capital, Nanjing. Mao was a controversial figure. He was regarded as one of the most important individuals in the 20th century. At one hand, 
He was known in the communist world as a political intellect, theorist, military strategist, and poet. He has fans across the globe and even in the United States. On the other hand, his radical communist policies, like the Great Leap Forward movement, have caused the biggest famine in the 20th century and resulted in the death of tens of millions of people. The Ten Years Cultural Revolution to remove counter-revolutionary elements in Chinese society was marked by violent class struggle and destruction. The whole nation became a personal cult. Everyone has to carry the little red book, quotations from the Chairman Mao, Zedong, and follow it in the day-to-day -day life. The Cultural Revolution was determined even by the CCP itself to be a great historic setback. Tens of millions of people, among them many top intellectuals and CCP government officials, was exiled and persecuted, and Chinese culture has been greatly eliminated and replaced. It's fair to say, without Mao, CCP couldn't have won the Chinese Civil War and established the People's Republic of China. History will judge if all these efforts were just another useless cycle of peasant revolution that has been the perennial Chinese melody since the First Dynasty, Qing Dynasty, which united China for the first time 2,000 years ago. The social and political structure was merely a passive result of the underlying economic relations. Change of regime by violent revolution does not improve the productivity of the society and instead destroy both the supply and demand. The emperors have cruel reign over the peasants and its people. Then the peasants and farmers conduct the uprising and overthrow the imperial regime. Then after these peasants, revolutionaries, tasted the power, they again turned into autocracy themselves, creating a dead-end circle over and over again. Mao was born into a prosperous peasant family. He was particularly influenced by his father-in-law, Yang Changji, who was his teacher when he was studying in the fourth normal school of Changsha. He was inspired by the events of Xinhai Revolution and May 4th movement in his teenage years. He later adopted Marxism-Leninism while working at Peking University as a librarian and became a founding member of the Chinese Communist Party. His background largely helped him to understand the Chinese peasants as well as the society in the rural area and set him apart from all other founding members of the CCP from big cities with proletariat working class backgrounds. Although Soviet and Comintern delegates attended, the first Congress ignored Lenin's advice to accept a temporary alliance between the communists and the bourgeois democrats, who also advocates national revolution. Instead, they stuck to the orthodox Marxist belief that only the urban proletariat could lead a socialist revolution. Mao became a history teacher after graduation. He established the Changsha branch for CCP and became the party secretary. To increase the influence of CCP, he organized workers to strike, such as the Anyuan coal mine strikes. He also ran the Peasant Movement Training Institute to take them through military training exercises. Through these activities, he has gained a lot of experience and insights in the antagonism in Chinese rural society, which serves as the firm base for his later guerrilla warfare and surround the cities from countryside strategy. Mao's leadership in the CCP was not achieved without struggles and fight. On day one of the creation of CCP, Soviet Union has been trying to exert influence. The Comintern had sent delegates to China to help the revolution ever since its first national congress. They tried to copy the success of Bushwick of the working class in Soviet Union directly to China. But it didn't suit the Chinese condition, as the capitalism hasn't fully developed and the working class was very weak. Many of the CCP leadership has experience and education in Soviet Union. The internal power struggle between Mao and Soviet delegates went on through the first period of civil war. In 1927, after the defeat of the Autumn Harvest Uprising, the CCP Central Committee in Shanghai expelled Mao from their ranks. 
and from the Hunan Provincial Committee for his focus on rural activities and his military opportunism. Mao ignored them and established the base in Jingangshan City and boosted the army's numbers to 1800. When the Chinese Soviet Republic was founded in 1931, Mao has been elected both the head of the state and chairman of the Central Committee. Not long after that, he was deprived of the command in the Red Army in 1932. The KMT armies then adopted a policy of encirclement and annihilation of the Red Armies. Outnumbered, Mao responded with the guerrilla tactics influenced by the work of ancient military strategies like Sun Tzu. But Zhou Enlai and the new leadership followed a policy of open confrontation and conventional warfare. The turning point was in November of 1934, when the Red Army faced heavy losses in the Xiang River battle and lost almost 40,000 troops. The CCP faced a total annihilation. Zun Yi Conference, held in January 1935, was an extended conference for CCP Politburo and was seen as the turning point for the Chinese Revolution. The main agenda of this conference was to examine the party's failure in the Jiangxi region and to look at the options available to them. It established Mao's leadership as both the party and the Red Army and the adoption of his strategy of guerrilla warfare. From Zunyi to Shanxi province in 1935, the 9,000 kilometers long march cemented Mao's status as a dominant figure in the party. Mao's success was largely based on his understanding of Chinese social structure and rural peasants. He has keenly observed that due to the backwardness of Chinese capitalism and the proletariat, China can't have the same strategy the Leninists used in October Revolution in Soviet Union. The Chinese Nationalist Party, aka KMT, was founded by Sun Yixian in 1912. KMT has established the Guangzhou government in parallel to Beiyang government, who was ruled by warlord Wu Peifu in Beijing. KMT was later led by Chiang Kai-shek, and retreat to Taiwan after the defeat in Chinese Civil War in 1949. The CCP and KMT were both opponents and allies. From 1921 to 1949, there were two stages of collaboration between them and also two stages of civil war. The first stage of collaboration is between June 1924 to July 1927. This collaboration is facilitated by Soviet Union, as we have discussed previously. This is because KMT and its Canton government accepted aid from the Soviet Union after being denied recognition by Western powers. From CCP side, since June 1923, Communist Party members were allowed to join KMT as individuals while maintaining their separate party identities. After the death of Sun in 1925, the right-wing successor Chiang Kai-shek took his position and abandoned Sun's principle to work with Soviet Union and CCP. KMT started to purge the communists right after the success North Expedition that overthrew the warlord's government. The attack to CCP announced the end of the first collaboration and the start of civil war in 1927 six years after CCP has founded. The first stage of civil war lasted between 1927 and 1937, before the Sino-Japanese War broke out. At first, Chiang refused to ally with CCP, preferring to unite China by eliminating the warlords and CCP forces first. On 12 December 1936, Two high-ranking KMT general Zhang Xueliang and Yang Hucheng conspired to kidnap Cheng and forced him into a truce with the CCP. The incident became known as the Xi'an Incident. Both parties suspended fighting to form a second united front to focus their energies and fight the Japanese. In 1937, Japan launched its full-scale invasion of China and its well-equipped troops 
overran KMT defenders in northern and coastal China. The alliances of CCP and KMT was in name only. Unlike the KMT forces, CCP troops shunned conventional warfare and instead waged guerrilla warfare against the Japanese. The level of actual cooperation and coordination between the CCP and the KMT during World War II was minimal. CCP used the opportunity to expand and carve out independent bases of operations to prepare for the coming civil war with the KMT. While the Second United Front formally existed until 1945, all collaborations between the two parties had ended by 1940. In general, developments in the Second Sino-Japanese War were to the advantage of the CCP, as its guerrilla war tactics had won them popular support within the Japanese-occupied areas. However, the KMT had to defend the country against the main Japanese campaigns since it was the legal Chinese government, a factor which proved costly to Chiang Kai-shek and his troops. The CCP also suffered fewer losses through its guerrilla tactics. By the end of the war, the Red Army had grown to more than 1.3 million members, with a separate militia of over 2.6 million. About 100 million people lived in CCP-controlled zones. However, the CCP's ultimate trump card was its land reform policy. The CCP continues to make irresistible promises in the countryside to the massive number of landless and starving peasants that by fighting for the CCP, they would be given their own land to grow crops once their victory was won. This strategy enables CCP to access an almost unlimited supply of manpower for both combat and logistic purposes. Despite the CCP suffered heavy casualties throughout many of the wars, manpower continued to grow. For example, during the Huaihai campaign alone, the CCP was able to mobilize 5.4 million peasants to fight against KMT forces. At the same time, KMT rule over reconquered territories would prove unpopular because of endemic party corruption. The second stage of civil war in China contains three main campaigns, Liaoshen, Huaihai, and the Pinching campaigns. It's finally time to take over the cities from countryside. Each of these campaigns lasted around two months. In these three campaigns, CCP Liberation Army wiped out 144 regular and 29 irregular KMT divisions including 1.5 million veteran KMT troops, which significantly reduced the strength of nationalist forces. With the decisive Liaoshen campaign, by late 1948, CCP captured the northeast city of Shenyang and Changchun and seized control of the northeast after suffering numerous setbacks while trying to take the cities. The Pingjing campaign resulted in the communist conquest of northern China. It lasted 64 days, from 21st November 1948 to 31st January 1949. The PLA suffered heavy casualties while securing Zhang Jiakou, Tianjin, along with its port and garrison at Dagu and Beijing. CCP's Liberation Army greatly lacked weapons and ammunition. The capture of large KMT units provided the CCP with the tanks, heavy artillery, and other combined arms assets needed to execute offensive operations south of the Great Wall. By April 1948, the city of Luoyang fell, cutting the KMT army off from Xi'an. Following a fierce battle, the CCP captured Jinan and Shandong province on 24th September 1948. The Huaihai campaign of late 1948 and early 1949 secured East Central China for the CCP. The outcome of these campaigns were decisive for the military outcome of the civil war. CCP's victory was not by accident, but a combination of multiple factors. Soviet Union played an important role in the Chinese civil war. Its involvement helped CCP's growth and victory. 
Mao's leadership was the deciding factor for the victory. His background and deep understanding of the Chinese society enabled him to take a different route than other communist leaders and the proletariat revolution in Soviet Union. However, this also made him dis deviated from the orthodoxy of Marxism, which is a proletariat revolution against the bourgeoisie. His land reform had greatly unleashed the manpower of numerous peasants in is no different than any of the previous peasants' revolution. The final deciding factor is the backwardness of the Chinese society and people, the underdevelopment of capitalism and the political division, decided it would not become a capitalist and democracy society. In the next video, we will take a look at why China has evolved from an imperial monarchy system into a socialism by CCP, who represented the farmers and peasants in rural area, but not proletariat represented by Soviet Union or the bourgeoisie represented by the Nationalist Party.